That's a strange question because I've been performing stand-up for two months. I've been on stage three times, but I've been performing in front of people my entire life. Uh, in some Spanish-speaking country, they have a billboard against child abuse for children that adults can't see because it's at street level and it's made of an optical illusion of some sort, I forget the name of, that if I'm looking at it, I see a different thing from you know, a kid looking at it. The kid sees a beat up kid with a number that says, is someone hurting you? Call this number. But for the adult, it's just a kid that says basically abuse is wrong and no number or anything, which I find suspicious. Uh, I think there's a big problem though. You're putting it on the news. It's a billboard that's designed for a small kid to be able to covertly rat out his parents and you're letting the parents know what the billboard says. <laughs> it was in English, though. The news story was. But I've met bilingual people before. And so I know that there's some guy out there who watches this video, sees this with his kids, and is like, hey, no. I've seen this. Seen this. Don't look at it. Not to mention the surly midget fathers. <laughs> because you know somewhere, somewhere, there's a kid who has a midget dad that beats the shit out of him on a regular basis. You don't think about it, because it's a rare occurrence. You assume. I don't know. I don't know the statistics of midget on child abuse. Uh, but I just imagine the kid sees the billboard, but his dad is like three inches shorter than he is. So he sees the billboard too, he's like, hey, don't think about it. <laughs> Come down here. I grew up watching stand-up and watching comedy movies in general, and uh, I was always kind of fascinated by it and always thought, well, if I could get on stage, what would I say? And then as I got older, I realized that uh, my brain doesn't work the same way that a normal person's brain does, and people find that hilarious for some reason. So I decided to just try it, and I really liked it, so that's why I kept doing it. Well, I, I personally don't want children now. Uh, I'm 23 years old. I'm still basically a child at heart, and mind, and actions. I'm still pretty much entirely, I'm like a kid that smokes marijuana on a regular basis. <laughs> so I guess I'm just like a kid. <laughs> At this point, it's basically all that I have in terms of performance. Um, I am addicted to being on stage in front of people. Uh, it is the best feeling that I ever feel. And the only other alternative in this area is community theater, and I've done that for years and I'm tired of it and stand-up is just more independent and more me. So that's where I get my fix now. Anybody here like marijuana? Woo! Woo! Marijuana! Yeah. Any cops in the audience tonight? <laughs> Probably should have asked those from the way around. Shit. <laughs> well, there's one good thing. The Jones Road Police Department is filling some quotas today. <laughs> so I don't want kids because if I wanted to be kept up all night by a crying, sticky, upset person, I would never have gotten therapy to heal my chronic masturbation. Because if I want to be sticky and crying, that's me. Sleep deprivation. But you can't, you can't get a refund on therapy, can you? I'm seriously asking. It didn't work. <laughs> it's not like I went there by choice, though, because if I had my brothers, I wouldn't be up here right now. I'd be off somewhere furiously masturbating. <laughs> no, the judge was pretty clear. I had to get help. <laughs> because sometimes we don't notice our surroundings. <laughs> we may not realize that the 20 minute masturbation fun we just had in a car while we were waiting on somebody to get out of the building was across from the playground. <laughs> and so now I'm on one of those websites that people check before they move in the neighborhoods. <laughs> it's really harsh my vibe. 
I would like to do this professionally in the next, I don't know, five, ten years. Um, I'd like to make some sort of living that is a sustainable form of living. Um, but as for my comedy goals, my goal is the same thing that it's always been, and that is to entertain people first and foremost. I joke a lot about marijuana, and that's because it's a big part of my life. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I'm, you know, there are some people that get up and they see car parts and they see, you know, car magazines and they're like, oh, I fucking love cars. I know everything there is to know about cars. I know nothing about cars except how to drive it. And I know almost everything there is to know about glass pipes and water bombs. Everything. Uh, seductions outside of town just started selling paraphernalia, uh, tobacco paraphernalia, quote unquote. And every time I go in there, there's this lady that asks me questions about her own stock. It's like, hey, what does this do? Hey, what does this do? Hey, what does that do? And she almost stumped me the other day because she handed me a rock with two holes in it. She said, what's this? I said, it looks like a rock with a hole through it. <laughs> she goes, no, but we're selling it. I don't know what it is. And it took me like five minutes because I've never seen one of these in person. It was a roach stone. The stone you put the roach of the joint into and then smoke it without burning yourself. So I told her as much. And she brings me another thing and says, what is this? And I say, well, that looks like an ash catch. It's something you put on a bomb. So when the ash goes through the bowl, it just catches it in there. So going into the bomb. She goes, OK. She brings me one more thing and says, what is this? I go, man, I believe that is a vibrator. <laughs> that looks like a sex toy. I'm not big on sex toys. I don't know a lot about sex toys. I know enough to get by. <laughs> I'm very self-deprecating. Uh, I grew up depressed and bigger than everybody else, which means that I developed a pretty thick skin pretty quick. And I also learned how to laugh at things that I probably shouldn't laugh at. And so my humor tends to be very inappropriate and uh, somewhat dark and very self-deprecating, uh, as I already said. So basically, uh, that mixed in with a decent amount of absurdity and you have pretty much my entire sense of humor. <laughs> I have had sex several times <laughs> even if I don't look like it. <laughs> and every partner has survived a tail to tail. <laughs> There's never any scenario like a mine in or a caveman in a mine where someone just gets trapped. <laughs> the fleshy blob forming a vacuum seal around the breathing until slowly everything goes dark. And suddenly, there's a grease stain in my bed where once there was a woman. Or man. <laughs> Uh, but fortunately, we got the miners out of every practice. That's all I got for tonight, folks. If you love something, and if you want to do something, the only thing that ever stops you from accomplishing a thing is you. Um, if you really want to get it done, get it done. Uh, you can sit around and make excuses all day, but I... Uh, as the wall out there says, uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I guess uh, determination is key in everything. And those are the words that I would say to anyone who asked me for advice.